Blessed be the one holy and ever living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you and also with you let us pray almighty and everlasting God in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations preserve the works of your mercy that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever Amen. Amen. Psalm 96 said in unison, Sing to God a new song. Sing to God all the whole earth. 
Sing and bless God's holy name. Proclaim the good news of salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations, God's wonders among all peoples. For God is great and greatly to be praised, more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols, but it is God who made the heavens. Oh, the majesty and magnificence of God's presence. Oh, the power and the splendor of God's sanctuary. Ascribe to God, you families of the peoples, ascribe to God honor and power. Ascribe due honor to God's holy name. Bring offerings and come to the courts of praise. Worship the most holy in the beauty of holiness. May the whole earth stand in awe. Tell it out among the nations that God reigns. God has made the whole world so firm that it cannot be moved. God will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before God, who will come, who will come to judge the earth. God will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with truth. A reading from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places, so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob, and Israel my chosen. I call you by your name, I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west, that there is no one beside me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make weal and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. A reading from Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only 
in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere, and teach the way of God in accords with truth, and show deference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. May the Holy Spirit be with us all as we consider some teachings on this Gospel reading from Matthew. Amen. The rector I served with at St. Edward's, Jason Lucas, remarked in his sermons that Matthew makes it really hard on his preachers because the instances that he presents are so demanding and uncompromising. The reason this may be the case is because it is said that Matthew himself was a renowned Pharisee who was at odds with his brothers because of his stance regarding the divinity of Christ. Matthew was presenting his views to a highly educated and extremely composed and proud audience. Members of his own synagogue and maybe other synagogues in the surrounding area He presented pronouncements of Jesus as that of a rabbi with a stature and standing far above that of his own or that of his colleagues. If such is true, then it is no wonder that others of his standing would seek to call Jesus' credentials and bona fides into a question. Who is this guy? Where did he learn? Where did he go? Who was his teacher? Thus the need for Matthew to imbue Christ with unquestionable knowledge, stellar elocution, and undefeatable debate technique. In much of what we have learned from Matthew in these last few weeks, Jesus has been providing explicit observations about the cultural distinctiveness of Judaic life and using it to illuminate the meaning of the word for those who had ears to hear. Additionally, and perhaps infuriatingly, to both the Roman state and the religious hierarchy, much of what he had to say directly challenged the status quo and raised the question of whom obedience was owed to what higher authority? As we have worked our way through Matthew, the beat of the Jesus drum and the tone of his teaching demonstrates more intensely 
why his people needed to pay attention to all of his ministry and get ready for the days to come. The parables become more explicit. The challenges and the testing at the hands of the Pharisees and other learned elders become more intense. I bring this up because it is often the times of testing and intensity when Christ is moved to share with us some of his deepest insights and his most cherished intentions and hopes for us as a people. We know, but the people of the time did not, that Jesus knew what was coming. And the nearest, nearness of the onset of it, he felt he had to step up his game, accelerate his program, get to the goal of education and illumination faster. The question this gospel may be asking all of us is when the chips are down and when the jig is up, to whom do we render our allegiance? And do we know the difference between our heavenly duty versus that which is political, social, personal, or civic? This Sunday we need to ask, is our allegiance to God or is it to whatever might otherwise be our personal Caesar. I wonder out loud with you, do the momentous social and political upheavals of the day interfere, distract, or confuse our loyalties? Can we take some advice from what Jesus is saying to the clever naysayers of the day? Do not test me with attempts to confuse my loyalties. No, no, don't, don't do that. I'm not having it. His words are clear. His intent is undisguised. Jesus knows, and so should we, to whom we owe allegiance. Do what we must for Caesar. But doing so does not relieve us of our duty and our obligation to render what is due to God. Jesus knew that when both the Pharisees and the Herodians showed up together, that the elders were putting their best players on stage. To side with the Pharisees in front of the Herodians was treason. To side with the Herodians and submit to Caesar would catch Jesus elevating a man above God. Surely they had our Lord this time. Oh, he was in the trap. No way for him to get out of this one. As we have seen many times before, Jesus can play the role of any scholar better than even the most learned and the most crafty ones can. The Pharisees did not yet realize that they were playing for very high stakes, a very high stakes game. They did not know that in attempting to outsmart Jesus, they were putting their mortal souls at risk and were failing to see the consequences of doing so. I found an explanation from a scholar. This is Matthew L. Skinner, and I believe he's over at uh, Luther Seminary. He says, The coin in question is a silver Roman denarius depicting the emperor's image, his head, and bearing the inscription, Tiberius Caesar, son of the deified, deified? Augustus. Who is Augustus? See here, under Tiberius. The coin's reverse declares Tiberius a high priest. Hmm, that's interesting. The coin makes a claim. It asserts that the emperor's divinity, really? Also implied in the name Augustus. And it proclaims, therefore, Tiberius as the mediator of the emerging Roman religious state. Oh, this is big time stuff. Like I said, Jesus wasn't having it. We know the story, where it goes, the tragedy of loss that is yet to come. We have spent the last few weeks following Jesus' return to Jerusalem, seeing his authority and his wisdom spread through the dissemination of uh, parables. This last couple of weeks, theologically outwitting the local leaders of the time, and in weeks to come, we're going to see Jesus' dismissal of traditional religious leadership we're going to hear him talk about 
the apocalyptic discourse. We're going to get more lessons and more parables about law, management, and getting prepared for the reign of Christ before we take the turn into Advent. And are we fully prepared not only to embrace and adore the world while we are here at church, but are we willing to step off the stage, expose the true depths of our faith in Christianity to the world beyond the protection of these four virtual walls? Jesus is suggesting to the Pharisees that they are players who only love the word when they are playing. And the game that they were attempting to play with Jesus was putting their immortal souls in jeopardy. So if you believe the admonition and direction we have heard from Christ in these texts and parables, the admonition by Jesus to the Pharisees was that loving God is an altogether different choice than rendering allegiance to Caesar. What is astounding to them is that Jesus, imperfect and unimpeachable logic manages to raise the standard of political choice to a level of spiritual obligation. Remember these religious elders stood on a knife's edge between living within the political confines of the Roman hierarchy and their own rabbinic code, most of which does not support the validity of the person they are seeking to discredit. I know there are often times in our own lives when we face a similar dilemma, when we struggle to hold on and command all the multiple roles that we have to play. Teacher, preacher, husband, wife, brother, sister, friend, counselor, or even foe, we can lose our connection, forget where our one true allegiance belongs. While on this stage we are pulled in many directions, by the beats of life's demands, the music of our hopes, by the demands of tuneful requests for assistance, by the pressure of fitting into place, by the exhaustion of satisfying the needs of our demanding audiences to whom we often have to perform. We can lose our sense of direction. We can forget who it is that we are truly trying to please. Not ourselves, not our audiences, not our congregations, not my employees, not my staff, but every once in a while through the Lord Most High Himself. All these Pharisees and Herodians, they hope to misdirect our Lord with tricky rhythms and alluring chords trying to make Jesus think that they loved Him. Ha! He was skillful as they thought they were. Jesus recognized their deceptions for what they really were, insincere, devoid of honesty, lacking in integrity. And what did he tell them? Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for tax. The startling simplicity of the end of today's gospel is a loud clap of thunder that it leaves us simply astounded, lonely, and humble by its appeal. Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. Who are you playing to? What kind of tune are you playing where is life's rhythm pushing you to go? Do you know if it's raining outside or the sun is fully shining? Participation in the kingdom that is yet to come requires only the belief of faith, the belief in the truth, the belief in the resurrection in loving presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now may the Lord of peace himself continually grant you peace in every circumstance. 
the Lord be with you and also with you. Amen and Alleluia.
Let us affirm our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, God, in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven, heaven and earth. I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He, he was conceived, conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of a Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, our Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Prayers of the People Holy One, in you we live and move and have our being. You call us to be your hands and feet, your heart and voice in the world. Through your grace at work in us, may justice roll down like a river and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Help us bring healing to our broken world. Blessed Creator, you love the world you have made. Guide us to find and embrace effective measures to halt the spread of COVID-19. Help us to care for the hardest hit communities. Protect all who work to keep us safe. Merciful God, our hope is in you. Redeeming God, guide us as we elect our leaders. May they act with wisdom, promote the dignity of every human being, and serve the common good. Benevolent God, our trust is in you. Inspiring God, bless our clergy as they follow Jesus in the way of love. We remember Michael, our presiding bishop, Craig, our bishop, Larry, William, and Morris, our clergy, the lay leaders of Saints Luke and James, and all who minister to your people in the church without walls. Loving God, our trust is in you. Reconciling God, open our eyes to see the effects of racism in all its forms. Heal our blind spots. Heal the harm racism has done to your people. Give us insight and courage to dismantle racism and build up the beloved community. Compassionate God, our hope is in you. Saving God, bring comfort and healing to all those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. We pray for Ashley, Barbara, Beth W., Bill, Bob, Brittany, Carl, Charlie, Colleen, Dan, Danielle S., David S., the DeVore family, Frank, Fred, Gail, Harper, Jean, Jim and Meredith, John, John and Liz, Kathy B., Kathy, Kurt, Kurt H., Liz, Margaret and Jerry, Marcello, Marlis, Mary Ann, Molly, Nancy, Rick, Riley, Ryan, Sarah S., Shauna, Theo, Sumatra, Virginia, Zania. Please add your own names. Merciful God, our hope is in you. Bless our dear ones who have gone before us, that your will for them may be, may be fulfilled as they continue their life in you. Please add the names of those you are remembering. 
bring comfort and healing to all those who are grieving. Merciful God, our trust is in you. Empowering God, help us put on our spiritual, personal protective equipment to do the work you have given us to do. The helmet of salvation to shield our souls, the breastplate of righteousness to protect the spirit breathing in us, the shield of faith to quench the fiery darts of fear, the belt of truth to banish confusion, and the shoes of the gospel of peace to bring comfort and healing. Gracious God, our hope is in you. We love you. Resurrecting God, we open our hearts to the work of your Holy Spirit. Cleanse us, renew us, and remake us into the image of your chosen one, Jesus Christ. May he increase as we decrease. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of our Savior Jesus Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Welcome and good morning. We're happy to have you with us for our online worship with the Episcopal community of Saints Luke and James in Minneapolis. We are so glad you could be with us today and hope you will return often. Each Sunday, we will have a gathering time on Zoom at 930 
one half hour before the 10 o'clock YouTube service. After the dismissal, we invite you to click on the link below the YouTube screen and join us for virtual coffee hour. An adult forum completes our morning schedule, offering a robust series of presentations and discussions, which you can find on the YouTube Zoom link at the bottom of the page. Now let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia! Alleluia! Thanks be to God. Alleluia! Alleluia!